Welcome to the complete guide for the Flip Fluids add-on for Blender. To make things clear, let me tell you that this guide will cover all settings of the Flip Fluids add-on. But we will not talk about the native Flip Fluids tool called MentaFlow that comes with Blender itself. Ok, this is how to get started. Two things are required to be able to use our add-on. The first thing is Blender 2.79 or 2.8 and above. You can download it from blender.org. The second thing is our Flip Fluids add-on. Visit our website flipfluids.com to download a free trial version or to buy the full version from the online store. Those who want to test the add-on first will be redirected to us on the GitHub page. Scroll down and find the Get Started text. There's a link to download the demo installation file. By purchasing the Flip Fluids add-on, you will be supporting the continued development of the add-on as well as helping contribute to the Blender development fund. Once Blender is installed and your add-on files downloaded, open Blender. In the Edit menu on the upper left, you will find Preferences. Click on it and then choose Add-ons from the left menu. What you find here is the complete list of installed add-ons. The small box to the left of the name shows whether an add-on is activated or not. To install a new add-on, click on the Install button. A file browser pops up. Let's find the downloaded FlipFluids add-on files in our Downloads folder. Choose the zip file by single left-clicking on the file and then click the highlighted Install add-on button. The installation will be finished in a few seconds and if the FlipFluids add-on does not appear directly in the add-on list, type in FlipFluids in the search box. Now click the small box to enable it. Click also in this small box on the bottom left of the window to save all changes by clicking Save Preferences. You can close this window now. If the installation worked successfully, you will find a new button in the Physics panel on the right side. It's this button from the vertical menu. If there is a hint to restart Blender to complete the installation of the add-on, save your file if required and then close and restart Blender. Now you should see the new FlipFluids add-on button with our own icon. Please keep in your mind that this has nothing to do with Blender's built-in fluids found on the Fluid button. Our add-on is designed to feel like being a native tool, but it comes with a different workflow and has many other features. Let's start with a simple simulation. All simulations need a domain box to limit the simulation range and a fluid or inflow object as minimum scene setup. You will be amazed at how easy it is with our add-on. Add a cube. Click the Flip Fluid button and choose Domain from the drop-down menu. So Domain will automatically be drawn as wireframe as it will only represent the simulation range and will not be rendered as an object. Add a sphere. Click again on the Flip Fluid button and choose Fluid from the drop-down menu. Fluid means to be some liquid that is already in your scene. It serves as a source for the simulator and will not be rendered too. This is why it also will be drawn as wireframe. Make sure this sphere is inside the domain cube, otherwise it will be ignored by the simulator. You can change the size and the position of it. And you can rename these objects for a better organization. As they are part of the Flip Fluids simulation, they were automatically placed in a Flip Fluids collection in Blender's Outliner. We recommend to save your scene before baking, 
This way you will be able to reopen it and continue baking a later time. Let's save it as first simulation. Then select the domain box. It's the holder of the most simulation settings. And when selected, these settings will appear on the right side. Our add-on detects the file name you have chosen to save your file and use it is as folder name for the baking cache directory, as you can see by opening the flip fluid cache field. You just need to click the bake button to start the simulator, but before doing it you should check if all settings are matching your scene setup. In example, the frame rate should be the same as it is set up in your general scene setup. If so, click bake. Something you will laugh is that you can follow the baking progress live. You can see how many percent of the simulation process has been finished or how long it may take to finish it. And you don't need to wait until 100 persons are reached. No, you can move through the timeline during the simulation. If baking takes too long for now, you can click the stop pause button. You can close Blender now and open it a later time to continue baking. More details about baked frames can be found under flip fluid stats. Open it to find all details about the whole simulation or the frame you actually are on. Ok, the fluid surface is the result of the simulator. It will be loaded into your scene frame by frame. This means simulations with a higher resolution can slow down Blender a lot. That's why we have chosen to let the simulator automatically generate a preview of the fluid surface during simulation. The quality of your preview and final mesh depends on your resolution settings. By default we work with a resolution of 65 for the final and a resolution of 32 for the preview mesh. These both default settings are very low and will give you a first idea about how your simulation will look like. For better results higher values are required. By the way, in the flip fluid debug field is a checkbox called display grid. When enabled you will see a grid around your domain box. It helps you to understand how resolution settings will take effect on the simulation result. When changing the resolution for baking you get a live feedback from the debug grid. The finer the grid is, the smaller liquid drops will become and the finer the simulation result will be but it will take a longer time to bake as well as for rendering. More about debugging in a later video. For now, let me disable it. You can switch between the preview mesh and the final mesh of the fluid surface all the time. Make sure the domain box is selected and open flip fluid display settings. There are two fields. Surface render display tells Blender to render the preview or final mesh of the fluid surface. Surface Viewport Display tells Blender what mesh will be used for the viewport. It's possible to use the preview mesh for editing, but render it with the final mesh. This is how we make the fastest workflow possible for you. When changing some of these settings, it's required to load a new frame into Blender by going to the next or previous frame. But there's another great thing which makes it even better to use our add-on. It comes with an additional menu that gives you a quick access to many important features without making you required to select the domain box first. It's placed in the Blender's properties shelf on the right side. Open it by pressing the N key on your keyboard or by moving this small row here to the left. There's a tab called Flip Fluids and when you click on it you will find some quick settings. The viewport mesh can be changed here too, just by clicking on Final or Preview and then reload the frame. But keep in your mind that this will only change the viewport mesh, but not the one for rendering. The last thing we need to talk about is rendering. 
We made a simple simulation, but there are no materials in our scene yet. This means when enabling the rendered preview for viewport shading, our fluid is grey-white. There are two ways to give your fluid surface a material. The first way is to choose something from our included preset library. While the fluid surface is selected, click on the physics button. And then open the drop down box for the surface material. You will find some materials with a double F in the beginning of their name. This double F means flip fluids and tells you these are materials from our presets library. Just click on a material and it will directly be visible in the viewport. The same way you can add materials to bubbles, foam, spray and all other particles once they have been simulated. The other way is the general way of adding materials using Blender. Click on the Materials Properties button and add, delete or change the material for your fluid surface. Before you start rendering an animation or an image, you should enable stable rendering. As Blender 2.8 was released in a first version, users reported some rendering issues when using our add-on. We found out that rendering was much more stable when locking the interface. That's why we added a button for stable rendering. Click on it. It's the same thing as on opening the render menu and clicking on lock interface there. You are now able to make some simple fluid simulations and render them using Blender. And we hope you enjoyed watching the first video of the complete guide for the flip fluids add-on for Blender. Please subscribe our YouTube channel. Goodbye.